the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the pressure enthalpy diagram and this will make us understand in a better way how the refrigeration cycle works, okay? So we're going to also be talking about the quality, the subcooled region, the superheated region and the mix of saturated pressure and temperature, all right? Let's get into it. So as we saw on another video that we had the refrigeration cycle, we have the four components. Number one would be the condenser. Okay, I, I would gonna put numbers very quickly. So this was component number one, condenser. Component number two, the TXB, or the metering device. Component number three, the coil or the evaporator. And component number four, Number four was the compressor. So the compressor is going to be inside the condenser and the TXB is going to be inside the coil and, or the evaporator, all right? So also we were commenting and we were saying that with a pink, see, we're going to make a line in here. We're going to divide this. That's the line, okay? And we're going to put in red color the high side. This is the high side high side with red. Why is it called the high side? Because it's high pressure. The compressor is going to make sure that this has high pressure, high side. And why is it red? Because that's the convention that we're using with the gauges. When you put these gauges to the condenser, you're going to have a red color and that red color means like high pressure, therefore high temperature. So that's the high side, red. And then we're going to have the other side, which is uh, blue. And when we say the blue, we're going to have the low side low side and that low side is related to the evaporator low pressure low temperature because the txb is going to make sure of that so th these two components are at, are at high pressure high temperature these uh, other two components are going to be at low pressure and low temperature and it's blue that's the convention that's uh what we have in the gauges so in other words this gauge which is blue is going to be making sure what's the pressure temperature of the evaporator and this red is going to make sure what's the pressure and temperature for the condenser all right but now let's check and get into the part that what the low side is and the high side number one we have to understand very well that the refrigerant let's put in here the refrigerant like the refrigerant which is the working fluid the free refrigerant which in this case is going to be the 4, 410A, see, 410A. And then we were also saying that there are other types of refrigerants like, like the R134A, the ammonia, and, and different other ones. But in this case, we're using the most common, which is utilized in homes, in systems for homes, all right? So that refrigerant actually is very interesting because this refrigerant could be in three states. Number one could be in a vapor state, could be in a vapor and liquid state, which means a mix. Let's pull this a mix. Or this could be in a liquid phase. Liquid liquid so how are, how would we determine uh, how do we determine if it's vapor mix or liquid that depends on the pressure and temperature so it's going to be on those states vapor mix or liquid so the ph diagram is very useful because this is going to let you know what the state of the refrigerant is and also it's very good for making calculations so now let's start explaining the diagram so what we have on this side is the pressure. And with the pressure, we have to note that this is in PSI A. P. Oh, we're, let's, uh, we're going to put this in blue so that way we, we see better. PSI A. Okay? So it has to be absolute. And these gauges are going to give you only and only, they're going to give you PSI G. PSI G. So the PSIG is going to be the pressure. Oh, that's going to be, let's say, the gauge pressure. That's going to be the gauge pressure. Gauge pressure. Okay? 
gauge pressure. What we need to get though for the diagram is PSIA, which is absolute pressure. Absolute pressure. Absolute pressure. So how do we check on that? Because whenever we're checking with the gauges or any manometer, we're taking into account only the gauge pressure what is in the system. We're not taking into account the atmospheric pressure. We're going to put in here P ATM. That's going to be atmospheric pressure. And the atmospheric pressure is going to be related to the sea level or depending on the altitude, atmospheric pressure. All right. How do we relate those three? Those three are going to be related by the following equation. So absolute PSI, see P, uh, absolute equals PSIG plus P atmospheric. In other words, absolute is going to be the measurement in PSIG plus sea level is 14.7 PSI. All right. So in other words, if we want to get a, a measurement of the following, so let's say that we're going to do this in here, the following, say that we want to get PSI, um, PSIA, so PSIA is going to be equal to PSIG, which is the gauge pressure plus 14.7 at atmospheric pressure at sea level. All right. So now we have this measurement that is the PSIA and then the other measurement is going to be the following enthalpy. Enthalpy. All right. <coughs> so in the enthalpy, we're going to have the three regions. Okay. So let's continue with this. This is going to be the subcool region. Okay. Let's go back to the refrigerant. All right. The refrigerant is going to be R410A, or it could be different refrigerants, type of refrigerant. And the refrigerant is going to be in three phases, one, two, three. So where is the liquid phase? So this is, I'm going to put in here, this is called the liquid, okay, liquid vapor curve, okay? So on this side, on this side, see, you have the following saturated vapor, saturated, saturated vapor. And then on this side, see, you have saturated, saturated rated liquid okay so in other words whatever is on this side let's put it in here like this see whatever is on this side is liquid there we go liquid and the refrigerant is the r410a whatever is on this side is going to be vapor see let's put it in here like this like this, all of this is going to be such vapor. All right. So the saturated liquid is going to be whenever the state is hitting this liquid vapor curve. And whenever they hit this line is going to be saturated vapor. However, the region in here is going to be called subcooled region, subcooled region. And whatever it is, all this region is going to be called superheated region. Superheated region. All right. So subcooled region, superheated region, saturated liquid, saturated vapor. In other words, let's say that our refrigerant is in this side. And in this side, what we have is going to be our refrigerant in completely liquid state. All right. So let's put three, only three points in here. Okay. We're going to put point number one. Oh, we have in here one, two, three components. We don't want to uh, get confused by that. So let's put in here the following one star that's going to be called star A. Okay. That's going to be called in here star B. 
that's gonna be called in here star c okay so in here let's see what each case means all right star a means the refrigerant is well, it's, this is a small okay the refrigerant is in completely liquid state liquid what about in star b star b the refrigerant is in a mix mix of what vapor and liquid and in state c we're going to have the following state c is going to be completely vapor since in this side it is completely liquid it's in the subcooled region and we're going to say that the refrigerant is in a sub subcooled liquid state since in this side it's in the superheated region we're going to say that the refrigerant is on the superheated vapor state all right but in general you can always say like on this side is liquid mix and vapor that's all or superheated vapor all right so now let's make one two more points in here so we're gonna put this a b c and let's put in here another one which is a b c x no no x no p and this is gonna be the point q okay so since we're using stars let's put a star star it's gonna be q all right so in here let's understand what is the point p and q okay so let's put in here p a and q p all right so there's a refrigerant in the point p is going to be in a saturated liquid form saturated liquid saturated liquid so what does mean saturate what does it mean saturated liquid it's pretty much the uh, boiling point like when when the refrigerant is going to right start to boil all right so you add a little bit more of pressure and more temperature it's gonna start boiling by starting boiling you're gonna have at least one percent of vapor starting to form okay so that's the point where it says saturated liquid kind of boiling point okay now what we're going to put in here in the point c is when you have 100 percent of vapor so in here you're having for example 50 percent vapor 80 percent vapor 90 to the point that it's to the point that is going to be 100 percent vapor in that point we have point q is going to be saturated vapor saturated vapor okay the first one it's called also boiling point and the other one is called bubble point because if you get if you decrease the temperature a little bit more you're going to start condensation so boiling point and we would call in this bubble point okay saturated liquid state saturated liquid vapor and in the middle you have a mix saturated pressure saturated temperature it's going to be the same all right so I hope you enjoyed, you enjoyed this video and this is going to be part one of the pH diagram due to the importance of this diagram. pH diagram, pressure, enthalpy, alright? So I'll see you later, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.